What's up guys, it's Blanks here today with another breakdown video. Today I'm gonna to be breaking down the project for our track Pretty Lush with Mako. Uh, it's got a little bit of, it's got a little bit of our traditional dark rap stuff, but also has a little bit of our new wavy kind of stuff in there. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. All right, so <clears throat> first thing we have, uh, obviously we have two groups here our track group and our vocal group and I usually break our tracks down like this anyways because I like to keep everything like very very like over organized I guess maybe I'm a little bit too hardcore but uh, it works good for the way that I like to do things so uh, when I open up the uh, track group you can see that we have drums bass instruments uh, this is like a bridge which is just a whole set of instruments in itself because it's kind of like a different sort of, um, uh, it's got different drums, it's got different bass, it's, you know, the whole the whole nine. So, um, yeah, so th that's, you know, pretty much, we'll get into the, we'll get into the details of it. And then we have effects. And then when we open up our vocal group, we have our bridge vocals. And then we have our verse vocals, which is rapping and then basically singing for the bridge. So we're going to break down everything that we've got here one by one uh, and just kind of go through and see what we've got so first we have um, our drums and take a quick listen to this so the kick is pretty straightforward sampler with some parallel compression and some saturation we have our snare drum looks like I took two snares and I think it may just be a snare that I made, and then um, the second one is just one that we use for fills. Yeah, so we've got some uh, modulation and some reverb, two different types of uh, reverb here. Um, this one's actually almost more of like a slap delay if you listen to the snare by itself. Our hi-hats, it looks like we've got four different hi-hats here. Let's take a look at the pattern. So here's this is what our pattern sounds like. Yeah, so nothing extraordinary. The hi-hats just, you know, the drums in general are pretty straightforward. It's nothing too too crazy going on here. Then we have bass for our bass. We have a sample and a little bit of EQ, and that's pretty much it because the sample is... Um, so... There's the bass. Again, nothing too extraordinary. You know, this was the kind of kind of track that pr kept it pretty simple. The actual main sound here that came in the beginning, um, this was a sample that I took out of Ableton's stock library, and I stretched it and stretched it and tweaked it and applied a bunch of effects to it, and then I bounced it down. And then I added some of these effects on here. So let's go ahead and hit and hear it dry without any of the effects. So you can tell it has a super stretched sound. So it was probably something like this. And a lot of times I'll do things like this um, and the other guys as well, where you take this sound and you stretch it, just completely stretch it out until it's just like pure chaos like ter just terrible like digital noise even you can hear in it right so then you take this and you throw on some effects some reverb and then some EQ to uh, tame it just kind of cutting out the lows and the highs And I mean, I could have made this sound with anything. I could have taken a synth and just easily, just as easily made the same type of sound. But, you know, I felt like it was a, um, it was just one of those spur of the moment things. I heard the sample and then I was playing, probably doing something completely different with it and just started stretching it, heard something I liked and then went with it. And that pretty much runs through a big portion of the track. I mean, it goes through the entirety of the spots that have rapping. So 
Um, yeah, pretty prominent piece for something really simple. Um, and then we have a another sample, and this was something I think I bounced from either an Arturia synth or some kind of a retro synth. Um, but let's take a look and let's break this down really quick. So if we take away all the effects, let's listen and see what we have here. And let's see, do I have any automation here? And it looks like I probably bounced the automation too because I can hear some pitching effects that I did. So I probably threw a bit of uh, pitch automation to create the actual sound. Then uh, this guy right here alone adds some, um, some really nice effects to it from Baby Audio. Some EQ, little boosts in the high mids. Uh, taking out all the lows and cutting out the really high highs. Um, this guy, again, just throwing in some uh, very fast like pitch modulation, but also sort of rolling, rolling a bit off of the top. Uh, a bit of uh, re uh, delay here. And then a... Uh, cassette tape emulator and then when we play it all back together with the other sound we have and with drums and bass So you can see this track is very much, in terms of the verses, is very much a less is more kind of thing. You know, there's really not a whole lot going on, but it fills the space up enough uh, to where it leaves room for the vocals. And uh, we'll go ahead and get to that in a minute. Um, actually, you know what? We'll go ahead. Well, let's take a look at the effects really quick. There's just a few little things here in terms of the effects. So we have uh, just. This is really not even an effect. This should be in drums, but it's just a little, just a, a very basic 808 hi-hat. Um, that's just kind of adding a little bit of shimmer and like some ambience when the um, verse first drops in. And then we have a vocal sweep. And this is a reverb I think I took from my vocals in the bridge. And those are pretty common for us. Uh, we use those pretty frequently. Um, they just kind of help, like, sort of, like, build into the ver to the vocal. So when the vocal drops, it sort of has like, it doesn't necessarily come in too abruptly. It's not something we do all the time, but I noticed that in this particular track, I felt like, like the first verse came in a little bit like just very sudden um, and it sounded like it was just like sort of a big jump in volume in a way that I didn't really feel sounded per like exactly how I felt it should I guess so we threw a little bit of that sweep in there so uh, now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the vocals starting with uh, Gaz's vocal right here because he starts with the first verse and uh, he's got it. This is a very like layered out verse that he sent me a whole bunch of. Uh, obviously, as you can see, it's about eight different tracks here, um, and they are. Some of them are the same tones. Some of them are slightly different. So let's just go ahead and take a look, and we'll listen to them uh, one by one. Back and forth, you play the board. The score is yours. Suffer from the swelling. Chances are I'm dwelling on the past. Here's the second layer. Pretty much the same kind of thing. Let's listen to the next one. Back 
So obviously a very low, sort of devilish kind of um, layer there. Back and forth you play the goal, the score is yours. Suffer from the sun and chances I'm dwelling on the past. Now that one's obviously similar to the first two, it's just a little bit softer. Um, and then when you layer all of those together, you get this. Back and forth you play the ball, the score is yours. Suffer from the swelling, chances are I'm dwelling on the past. Say the last dance, never romance, not the book. So, um, as you can hear in there, comes another set of uh, high vocals that are in the background. So you hear this in the background. So we've got two different layers here. And then together. Okay, so and then uh, once the next part comes, we have like a small section where he highlights a specific uh, lyric you can see where he we cut out from the main there's the top one and we have and all together then uh, the next section we have a, a whole set of just high layered vocals. I think there's some mids in here also, but the the high layers become more dominant in this part. So that one's a background. Same thing in the mains. And these ones are panned left and right. Um, this high one and high three. And then we have a mid. So this mid and high two, those are both in the center, high one and high three. High one is right and high three is left. So that way we get a very wide um, and full kind of sound. And when we put it all together. Um, that's Gaz's verse. Now, uh, the way that we did that is the way that we tend to do a lot of our vocals, um, and every artist is a bit different. So when we got the files from Mako, you know, we told him, uh, hey, if you can send us three or four layers, you know, uh, that would be cool. Or maybe said two or three, I'm not sure. We usually are like, we at least want two, but three or four is preferable. Um, but you know, it's we will work with whatever we work with. We have people who send us one stem, so you know we'll make it work either way. It's just uh, it's a little bit less work in some ways, or I guess I feel like it gives us more flexibility with when we have more layers. So um, here's what we got from Mako. So we have our main layer, and I think this, which is pretty typical. I mean, obviously Gaz had a lot of variety, but there are many times where I will send a vocal. To dot or gaz for one of a tra for a track that they've produced that has four layers of the exact same tone. So uh, you know it doesn't have to have a variety. That just depends on what you're going for with the particular track. So uh, here's the first one we have from Mako. At first I was seeing potential, no I'm regretting the day that I met you Sipping the bottle to try and forget you Convinced in my mind that the devil we sent you caving in I call your phone and I hope that you're picking up Hate the fact you only want to talk to me when you get drunk And then we have the second layer At first I was seeing potential, no I'm regretting the day that I met you Sipping the bottle to try and forget you Convinced in my mind that It's a little bit deeper, but also quieter because this is a side So this is in the left, and then here's in the right that one's even a little, even a little bit lower uh, as well, and that's uh, maybe a little bit more monotone as well. Um, and then when you have it all together. 
At first I was seeing potential, no I'm regretting the day that I met you Sipping the bottle to try and forget you, convincing my mind that the devil we sent you Caving in, I call your phone and I hope that you're picking up Hit the fact you only want to talk to me when you get drunk Why, why do I like the abuse, chemically, physically, mentally too um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we've got for that. Um, now let's take a look at Dots Verse. Uh, again, another very layered, um, another very layered verse. Uh, I think all this stuff at the end is just a bunch of frozen bullshit that doesn't even need to be there. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, here's our top layer. Literally just one word, <laughs> one 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 uh, uh, one phrase. Excuse me. Same exact thing, just layered twice. Uh, and then we have a couple different things here. Okay, second layer. Third layer. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Then we have all three together. Just feel like the plague. And then we have a little break here with a whole set of five different vocals for this little short break. We've got one. Right, that's on the right side. That's on the left side. That's on the left, but you can tell it's a bit softer. Another soft one, but that one's on the right. Keep barking, you're a fool. And that's a soft one that stays in the center. And when you have them all together, Keep barking, you're a fool. nice, fat, good sounding uh, vocal. So, uh, and then lastly, we have a the last half of the verse, and we've got four different layers. Um, Oops, wrong one. Not to mention I'm my head case. Just a little front to hide it on my best days. Not to mention I'm my head case. Just a little front to hide it on my best days. Not to mention I'm my head case. Just a little front to hide it on my best days. Not to mention I'm my head case. Just a little front to hide it on my best days. And then we got an ad lib here. Wrong one. A nice dark echo in there. Now, when we put it all together, So there we have it, that's everything for the verses um, and everything except for the bridge. So we go ahead and take a look at the, um, take a look at what's happening in the bridge now. So uh, let's close down this. Uh, you can see that the bridge vocals, you can see I have all of the wrapping in one group just to keep everything nice and tidy. Um, and also, I do a little bit of different stuff with the group mix of the high, the uh, the bridge versus the rapping. So uh, <clears throat> I like to separate those into different groups because it allows me to have a little bit more flexibility if I want to do overall mixing on the group of the vocals, not just each individual um, track. But before we jump into the vocals, let's go ahead and just look at the bridge instruments. Um, so first. 
We have some synthesis, and I believe it looks like some of this was made with Arturia, and some of this was made with Korg um, synthesis. So let's just take a listen. Here we go. So this is a really simple melody, something I made with a um, analog emulated pad. That's pretty just pretty much the same thing all the way through as you can see by the MIDI pattern. And then we have um, this uh, second synth. And this is obviously another pad. We tend to use a lot of retro pads for the um, for this kind of stuff, uh, or just in general. I mean, a lot of our sound is sort of just formulated from retro synthesis. Um, and then there is a um, an evolving stab here. So let's take a listen. So as you can see, it's sort of like an evolving stab. Um, starts quiet, gets uh, sort of starts closed off, sort of opens up um, over time. And there is our. That's basically the the bread and butter of what we've got here. Yeah, so there you go. <clears throat> um, next, uh, we go into the drum section. Um, so we've got a couple, got a lot of different things going on here. Um, first, we have just like a, a loop that kind of just sort of chopped up. Um, Of course, this loop is um, when you when you take all of the effects off of this, it's going to have a much different sound. This is what the loop started as. And then after throwing some effects. peaking on every channel but didn't seem to bother me the way that it sounded so hey whatever <laughs> okay so next we have our kick drum which this is a very retro um, type of kick drum it's very very like knocky and kind of uh, thin it's not super heavy on the low end um, well, it, it is and it isn't. And compared to other kicks we use for like the hip hop parts, it's a bit less in, in the bass section. But um, then we just have a snare loop. Then we have a second snare loop. So we've got snares layered on top of each other. So together they create this. A little skip snare in there. Uh, then we have a hi hat loop, and you know, 
the reason that I use loops for this kind of stuff is because the reality is I could sit there and I can program all of this stuff, but it's a bit unnecessary. And I mean, you can tell that when it has this little uh, date and this date stamp on it, it means that I've already done some stuff to it to kind of change up the loop. So I probably took this loop, chopped it up, re uh, rejoined it back into one piece, and that's you know kind of what we ended up with in the end. Uh, and then we have this loop that's sort of like a mixture of different drums and hi hats and percussion and stuff. And when played together, here is our drum set. get the idea uh, pretty much runs the same through the whole thing and uh, all of it together sort of creates this sort of glued kind of sound um, next we're going to take a look at the effects that we have here so there's a little breakdown right here before it builds in to the actual bridge let's take a look here That's basically it, because these just repeat exactly what was here, but you can hear in terms of breakdown we have. We have this little guy down here. It's the same 808 uh, hi-hat that we used, or symbol that we used before. We have a sweep here. And we have another sweep. And then we have another sweep. <laughs> it sounds like that was a reverse symbol that I time stretched because it's got a bit of digital noise there. And another sweep, and then we have two impacts. So that's kind of like a cymbal and a sweeping white noise. Um, then we have an actual explosion, and all of these are have some minimal effects, as you can see, things like EQ, reverb, uh, some looks like a bit of uh, pitch pitch dropping. Um, EQ, reverb, more of that type of stuff. Um, and the, yeah, there is uh, again these vocal swells in the uh, spots right before the bridge breaks. And uh, yeah, that's it for the instruments. Um, then we, other than that, we really just have this bass, which this is a, not the same bass. This is a, a bass that was used on an analog modeled synth. So it's not a sub um, sample like you have here in the sampler. This one's actually coming from a synthesizer, so let's take a listen to that. Clearly, it's um, something that has been... Um, has been uh, arpeggiated to create the dum 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 sort of vibe to it um, and we've got a bit of NLS channel so giving it some saturation at the end and a uh, side chain to from the kick to create a sort of like pumping that we're getting you can't really hear you can hear where it sort of 
jumps up and down in volume and that's where the kick is hitting of course the kicks muted right now so you can't really tell but that's just sort of to get the bass out of the way for when the kick comes through it allows the kick to come through more clearly um, so let's go ahead and take a listen to all that stuff I'll go ahead and turn the vocals off so we can hear just what we're hearing with <laughs> So uh, lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at the vocals for the bridge. Um, so I have it separated into a couple different groups here. Um, it looks like I consolidated all of the low vocals together, but it's pretty similar to what we do with the highs. I've recorded two takes for the low. Um, and two, I have two main, and then I do two for the sides. And that's exactly the same thing that I did with the lows. So if they were not consolidated, and why I consolidated it for this particular track, I don't know what my thought, my thought process was at the time. But uh, whatever it was, I was clearly okay with the way that the mix sounded. Um, and so I felt like it was okay to go ahead and put them all together as one solid. So... Let's go ahead and just listen to the low takes. And again, consider it as basically four of these takes are all been have all been meshed into one channel. So um, oh, I've got to turn the vocals back on. Excuse me, sorry about that. A pretty last, pretty much one more shot before we touch. Is that enough? And I see enough. If it's not us, then call my attention. Not to mention, I fucked up. I learned my lesson. Let it go. I'll count my blessings. Rest in peace with no possession. And in terms of uh, what we're really actually hearing too is if I go into this and I turn off all these um, these spatial effects, this is really what we're hearing. It's just a pretty lush, pretty much one more shot before we touch. Is that enough? Enough's enough. If it's not lust, then call my blood. So what we're getting with these effects is we have a delay. With um, with some reverb also, we have a um, uh, modulating delay, which is really it's very it's also it's a it's like a reverb it's a free plugin from Valhalla called Supermassive. It's a extraordinarily awesome plugin, one of the best free plugins that you probably will find. Um, a delay, another delay. This one's kind of giving a bit of a reverse reverb sort of effect. And then we have a uh, modulation. A pretty lush, pretty much one more. And then we have our dry signal. A pretty lush, pretty much one. And when you put it all together. A pretty lush, pretty much one more shot before we touch. Is that enough? Enough's enough. Yeah, so that's that's what's do that that's on our group. That's going. That's doing overall. That's ha like affecting all of the vocals. So it doesn't matter which track it is. It's every single one is going through those effects. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening in the highs. So in the high section, 
Um, if you listen to it with the lows, there is an automation where the highs sort of fade in um, with the lows. So let's take a listen. Oh, excuse me, hold on. A pretty lush, pretty much One more shot before we touch Is that enough? Enough's enough If it's not lust, then call my blood Attention, not to mention so you can see when it gets to this section here where the overlay comes in, it the, the high becomes more dominant and the low breaks down um, a bit in volume. So there's an automation there that's making the low drop in volume and making the highs increase in volume. Um, but in terms of like what we actually have going on here, we have our main vocal. Then we have the secondary. So it's the same thing twice. It's just I record it two different times so they're not exactly identical because repeating them, like duplicating it, it doesn't quite have the same effect. So you actually record the same thing two different times, layer them on top of each other, and then there's a bit of... Uh, imperfection I guess you could say that sort of allows the two to kind of like gel together in a way it's kind of hard to explain in that way but um, and then we have the same thing in the left and the right so the same thing is recorded four different times and the next And then together, the four. And you can hear the vocals jump up at the end because that's right where the beat is about to drop. And that's where, so now when we play it with everything together, here's what we have. Yeah, I mean that pretty much concludes, you know, I mean other than that I could, could there's not really much else that I could tell you about the track. I can go into and break down, you know, the mixing and all of that kind of stuff because there this is obviously a very heavily processed um, track and uh, let's see, I think in total it looks like there was, yeah, so it looks like in total there was 95 tracks used in this song. So. It's um, reasonably extensive uh, in terms of the usage of different tracks and um, layering and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's really that's really all there is to show other than um, mixing, but this is not supposed to be a tutorial. This is kind of just a breakdown of the different stuff that we used, uh, how we layered our vocals, how we layered instruments, and uh, so on and so forth. So um, yeah, so I guess that's basically it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Uh, we will be doing more videos like this with other tracks in the future and some we will be doing that are more tutorial based where we kind of break down a bit of the mixing, a bit of the mastering, um, and sort of like what we do in terms of like the methodology of actually making the tracks. Um, if you enjoyed this, leave us a comment below. If there's any, if you have any questions, do the same. Uh, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.